Okay, uh, so uh, we're getting ready to fit the barrels, uh, the pistons and the barrels onto the uh, uh, onto the engine. So uh, that's quite exciting. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prep the barrels, uh, and that means uh, fitting the tappets or cam followers, as they're sometimes called. And um, I suspected that the cam followers were badly worn on uh, the original ones, and, and so I sent them with the uh, engine parts to Sega Engineering and indeed they confirmed that uh, the tappets uh, were worn uh, to excess and so I've got new tappets uh, and uh, the thing with new tappets is they have to be sized they're a very um, exact fit in the in the tappet block here uh, and so they have to be sized before fitting <clears throat> and that means um, rubbing down the mating surfaces on uh, some emery paper until you put them in and you can get a two foul uh, a two foul gap that around the edge so coming up are some photos there's no video but there's some photos of me rubbing down the uh, the the flats of the <clears throat> of of the um uh, tap it on emery cloth on a very, very flat surface. Uh, and then put them in and keep keeping um, rubbing them down until I've got a two foul gap. Uh, and apparently it's very important to get that because more than that and they're too worn, less than that and they can seize in the... Uh, you know, in the housing, which we don't want, obviously. And as part of that, uh, I bought these from Andover Norton, and they say not to use um, assembly lube because that's actually too thick. Uh, and so I'm going to be lubricating them with normal engine oil rather than... What I'll probably do is I'll put a very, very little bit of uh, assembly lube on. I'll put a mixture of assembly because I'm worried that the amount of time before the engine's used, that oil will have run out. Um, and then, then these will be running dry, which we certainly don't want. So I'll probably put a little thin bit of lube on, uh, assembly lube, and also some engine oil uh, to try and make sure they don't seize as the engine starts. Uh, you know, after the engine's been running, there's lots of lubrication. It's just that initial startup. So we'll be... Um, um, right, so hopefully... Uh, yeah, well, hopefully we've seen the photos of me rubbing the things down. So um, then they go in uh, as a pair. And uh, you can probably, if I can see where I am in the camera. Right, you can see this far end, there's a slight chamfer. And there's no chamfer at this end. Okay, so the chamfer goes away from the locking plates. And the locking plates go in these grooves, okay? So we'll be putting the tappets in this way round with the chamfers, this, this chamfered edge away from the, uh, the locking plates. So we put those in and then we'll be putting the locking plates in, then putting the screws through that hold the locking plates in place and then using our stainless steel wire to then lock the locking screws in place so everything's okay. So first thing, I'm, anyway, I'm probably going to do this off camera because the camera's just in the way. <laughs> I'm going to put some oil and lube everywhere, uh, make sure it's all nice and oily, and then we'll come back on camera and see the actual assembly. Okay, uh, so I've put a mixture of oil and uh, assembly lube on the tappets and the tappet block. So then I'm going to get the tappets, the new tappets, and rotate them so the beveled edge is away from the locating uh, side. And hopefully these will go in. <laughs> That's better. There. Okay. Let me get one of the locating plates that goes in there line the holes up on the 
Yeah, line the holes up with a locating plate with the holes in the tablet block. And then screw them through. There we go. Okay, they're nice and tight. And what we've got is there are very small holes in the end of the screws. So I don't know if you can see them from there. Uh, and they are small enough that we're then going to put our lock wire through. And uh, so lock these screws to make sure that they don't come out. Okay, so I've got my lock wire in place through the ends of both those screws. And I just put the two ends close together. Then I've got my special lock wire pliers. So we put those on, making sure we're getting both ends firmly in the jaws. And then we've got this little chrome lever here. We clamp and shut and draw that across. And that's now locked the pliers shut. We've got this chrome end. And what we do is we pull it out. And as we pull it out, that twists the pliers. If you don't want to over twist it because you can fracture the wire and then cut off the uh, excess amount of tail we don't want and tuck the rest down there and there we've got those tappets in with the lock plate and then the lock plate screws are through and they're wired together so they can't come undone and now we're going to do exactly the same repeat the operation on this side there we go uh so that's all done and then we just check that the uh the tablets are moving nice and uh, smoothly which they are very nice nice and smooth good pleased with that okay so tablets are in uh barrels are ready so the next thing we're going to do is put the pistons on the con rods uh we'll get the pistons ready and then fit the pistons to the con rods Okay, we're going to put the uh, <clears throat> pistons onto the con rods now. So I've generously lubricated all the the gudgeon pin and the uh, piston and the small end of the con rod. I've removed obviously the protecting uh, wrap that we put around the con rods. And what I've done, and then and I've put one of the circlips in on the in the inside circlip. We've already ascertained that it doesn't matter which way around these pistons go. And I've very, very gently heated the piston. Only very gently, and I can still hold it easily with my hand. And then I'm just going to introduce the gudgeon pin. Hopefully, there it goes. And then I'm going to look from the other side to try and make sure we're going to line up. There we go. And then push the gudgeon pin in. And because we've heated up that uh, piston it's just slid in really nicely obviously we're protecting the, we're now protecting the con rods obviously with this towel uh, from the crank case then we get the uh, then we get the other circuit and I get another piece of cloth another towel or whatever and I've put that round the top of the crank case because of course we don't want that damn circuit to ping off and disappear down inside the crankcase. Okay, so we get that. And then putting that in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check, check and double check that the circuit is in the groove. That's all good. And there we are. Piston mounted on con rod. All good. All lubed. Everything nice. Double check. Treble check the uh, circlips are in that groove. Good. Okay. 
and uh, I normally make sure that the uh, the gap is not at the bottom on the circlet. Okay, good. Right, and then we're simply going to repeat uh, for the uh, for the uh, second. Obviously, Conrad's at the top, but the second piston on now exactly the same.